And then I heard my name, and it was being screamed throughout the library. <laughs> Gary Hong! The money's here! <laughs> so he's running through the library shouting this, and he comes into the table where I'm at, and when he gets there, he's just exhausted. <sighs> I got the money. And he shoves a baggie at me. And in the baggie, there was 36 cents. Paul's still so excited. He says, Gary Oak, how many books can I buy with that much money? And I looked into those brown eyes of Paul and I said, Paul, you have just enough money to buy all your favorites. He says, I knew it. <laughs> so he told me what to write in his books. <laughs> to Paul. My very best friend, <laughs> to Paul, the smartest boy I've ever met. <laughs> so I signed these books to Paul and said goodbye, and we had a goodbye, and Annie and Boone, they were laughing all the way back to Utah about this little <laughs> Paul. And I've thought about that since, and how Paul was so enthusiastic, and he showed up with 36 cents and was expecting all his parents. Isn't that how life is? I mean, there's been plenty of times I've shown up way short in my baggie. But kind people have given me my favorites. I didn't show up in Ms. Bingham's fourth grade class as a great student. I had something in my baggie. Luckily, Ms. Bingham saw that it was personality, not troublemaking. Luckily, she saw that it was creativity instead of disruption. Luckily, she said, I will take your 36 cents and I will give you this back, which has turned out to be one of my But she read my book and she wrote me this letter, and I'll always remember this line out of her letter. She wrote, Dear Gary, it meant so much to me that you remember I was your teacher. And you know what? When I read that letter, I stopped right that second and I thought, Mrs. Pullman? <clears throat> Remember you? I do the things you taught me every single day. If I wouldn't have been in your class, I wouldn't be a storyteller today. That was Miss Pullman's big thing. She had us tell stories all the time. She taught me how to do it. When I did the assemblies yesterday, I did some things in the assembly that Mrs. Pullman showed me how to do when I was 11 years old. See how her influence, now she's gone on to the great teacher heaven in the sky. But her influence hasn't gone on. It still lives on. So I'm just telling you this, pat yourself on the back once in a while. You don't get enough compliments. You don't get enough pay. You don't get enough rewards. And there was a poster that Dr. Pepper was giving away a million dollars. All you had to do was find the cat that's somewhere in America underneath the cat that said winner. And Jonah looked around Rock Springs, Wyoming, and he figured, there's no better place to hide it than in this place. <laughs> Nobody's going to find it. <laughs> so he's standing there and he's trying to look up through the bottles to see if he can see the cat. And I says, Jonah, come on, let's go. He says, okay, Dad. I says, just get one. So he got his soda and we're driving down the freeway and he's holding it like this. And I know what he's doing. He's planning on how he's going to spend his million dollars. He's eight years old. These are positive thinkers when they're eight years old. And you know how when you take the lid off the soda, you hear that little psst. When the carbonation starts to come up, I heard that. Psh. So I glanced over and Jonah took the cap off. And he read it out loud. Please try again. <laughs> so he put it right back on. <laughs> he was just as excited the second time. <laughs> read it out loud. Please try again. <laughs> And he turned to me and says, how many times do you think i got to do it, Dad? <laughs> right, we want to make things that are interesting. What makes things interesting, whether you're in kindergarten or sixth grade or an author who makes their living, writing is in information. You have to give the reader interesting information. Just because I write it on my paper doesn't make it interesting. What makes it interesting is when I'm telling the reader things they didn't know. That's just the part that gets me. It's beautiful. 
is like a bouquet filled with golden brown passion flowers <laughs> and lime green herbs sprouting vanilla colored flowers. That's why it's beautiful. That's why I love my grandma's homemade chicken. Now we did this workshop and then the next day I was, they had me back for another day for follow up and I thought, oh, I want to copy Riley's story. And he was in the front row. I said, Riley, I'd like to get a copy of your chicken story. He says, oh, good, because my grandma's already made 20 copies and she's handed them out to everybody she knows. <laughs> so Riley went from a boy who wouldn't write three lines to a boy who wrote something that was published by his grandma's. And if you make more than one copy and hand it out to your friends, it's published. So he went from not liking to write to being a published writer just because his attitude changed and he started writing with more specific Details. I'll start here and say, this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. See how many different happens I'm getting in my paper? Then this happened. Can't think what happened next. The end. This is where they start. This is where they end. Look how far apart those two are. Okay. This is how I write my stories. Always make a circle. Is it Jonah? What color am I feeling? John said, oh, that's orange. Orange? I love orange. And they just stood there. And you could see he loved orange. And he was excited about orange. And I started rethinking orange. I said, maybe there's something orange I'm missing here. <laughs> and then he would slide over to that next slice of the beach one. He said, John, what color am I feeling? And John says, oh, that one's yellow. Same response, yellow. I love yellow. And he just sat there for a minute. And then he said these words, and I'll never forget them. He said, Jonah, it's too bad you're not blind. So you could see what I'm seeing. And I've thought about that a lot. See, when I see orange, I think I think all these things I associate with orange, but this boy had never seen any of those. Orange was just this experience for him. When I think yellow, I think of certain bananas and things. He just experienced this color. He was blind to everything related to it, just the color mattered. And sometimes when I go to schools, I feel I'm that way because I'll go in and I'm blind to everything about this student because I don't know anything about He's awesome when he writes. Like the little Tyler. Tyler, this is awesome. I love how you write. See what happened is, so, as soon as he told me they were cottonwood trees, it went from trees to cottonwood trees. And see how much his voice just improved right there? As soon as he said, went from I was walking in the wind to I was marching in the wind like a soldier in a bright red suit. It was so specific, I could picture that. I love that one. Boys and girls will write with those very long, but revising <coughs> everything that makes my story sound better. Hey, if it makes my story sound better, it's revising. Editing is everything that makes my story look better. Hey, if it makes it look better, that's editing. So, if I improve my word choice, revising. If I get better sentence fluency, revising. If my organization is better, revising. 